President Obama, uh, on New Year's Eve, signed uh, the National Defense Authorization Act. Gee, I wonder why he did it then. Obviously taking a lot of heat for it from progressives who he needs to help him win the election. He's just figured that out. And so he does it uh, when no one is paying attention. Uh, and he does a signing statement along with it uh, on H.R. 1540. Uh, so first of all, a lot of people have been saying, hey, wait a minute now. It's not fair to say that this bill uh, allows for the indefinite detention of U.S. citizens because that one portion of the bill, it says this says shall not change the laws regarding detention of uh, United States citizens. Except there's another portion of the bill that says that it does change the law. And now that is purposely vague because they do change the law, but they didn't want to take heat for it. So they put another provision in there going, oh, well, you know, hopefully you're confused enough by this. So what does it do? It leaves it to the executive branch as to whether they would like to take those extra powers or not. Now, what usually happens with the executive branch? They take those powers. But President Obama wants to make clear that under his administration, that the executive branch will not detain U.S. citizens since he's given the option in this bill basically with the vague language, because one portion definitely states that he can detain U.S. citizens, okay? So he attaches a signing statement uh, that objects to sections 1021, 1022, 1023, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 1231, 1240, 41, 42, 45, 44. So, in other words, he objects to an enormous portion of this bill but nonetheless, he will sign it into law. Now, if you remember, we objected greatly to signing statements under George W. Bush. That was, of course, uh, in a different era where now, apparently, if you're a Democrat, you're supposed to say signing statements are fantastic. Now, why do we object to it? I, let me jump to uh, uh, graphic number six here. Now, this is in the signing statement from President Obama. And it gives you a, an excellent sense of why we objected to signing statements, whether they're under Republican or Democratic administrations. Quote, should any application of these provisions conflict with my constitutional authorities, I will treat the provisions as non-binding. Excuse me, but what the hell is that? Did you guys, did, did we, any of us take civics courses? Did President Obama take a civics course? He taught constitutional law. Where in the Constitution does it say, hey, by the way, a president can sign a bill, but then say that I can treat any part of it he doesn't like as non-binding? <laughs> That's the most unconstitutional thing I've ever heard. That's totally not within our, uh, uh, our government to say, hey, you know what? Uh, the president is basically the, can do any damn thing he likes. He can take a law and say, ah, I like part A, I like part B, but I don't like 18 other parts. I'm glad you passed it in its entirety and I signed it in its entirety, but that is not how I will execute the law. It's ridiculous. It was ridiculous when Bush did it. That's why we were so mad about it. It's still ridiculous under Obama. Now, are there portions of the signing statement that I like? Yes, but the problem is, one, you can't have a signing statement be constitutional if you ask me. I think if you ask any decent law professor. And then uh, number two, other administrations and other courts will not take this signing statement as law because it isn't law. It is the president's opinion about a law that he's actually putting into effect. Now let's go to the parts that I kind of like, but show you the problems with those as well. So he says in his st a signing statement, I have signed this bill despite having serious reservations with certain provisions that regulate the detention, interrogation, and prosecution of suspected terrorists. Now, I like that he has reservations with it. A lot of people will read that sentence and go, that, that's it. See, I knew Obama was on the right side. But the fact that he has reservations is irrelevant. The fact that he signed it is the only relevant thing. You can have all the reservations that you like. If you sign the damn thing in the law, it's law. Now, second part. He says, I want to clarify that my administration will not authorize the indefinite military detention without trial of American citizens. Indeed, I believe that doing so would break with our most important traditions and values as a nation. Now, again, I like those statements. I think a lot of people look at those statements and go, I knew Obama was on the right side, says he, he won't do the indefinite detentions. In fact, it's against our core principles. But the key words in those sentences, my administration. I want to clarify that my administration will not authorize the indefinite military detention, meaning the next uh, administration is perfectly free to do that because it is the law. You signed it into law. You don't get to say, hey, you know what, if it's President Romney or President Gingrich, 
then he has to have the same interpretation of this law that I do. And in fact, he doesn't even make that claim. He just says, my administration won't do it, but it'll be law, so you can be indefinitely detained later. Good luck to you. I don't know if it's part of his re-election campaign to then turn around and say, see, you don't want to elect a Republican because they might indefinitely detain you, whereas I signed into the law, but will, out of the goodness of my heart, choose not to do it until I change my mind. Uh, he continues in the signing statement, my administration will interpret section 1021 of the bill in a matter that ensures that any detention it authorizes complies with the Constitution, the laws of the war, and all other applicable law. Again, key sentence there, my administration will interpret section 1021, that is the most offensive section in the bill. But it's still in the bill, and they could choose to have a different interpretation on a different day. We are supposed to be a country of laws, not of men. We're not supposed to depend on the benevolence of our leadership, okay? Laws are laws, and he just signed it into law saying, yes, further admi my administration, future administrations can indefinitely detain you, which, by the way, goes to that point. The people who said, hey, you know what? Oh, no, no, this bill says that the previous laws are in effect, and you can't ind indefinitely detain uh, citizens. Really? Then why does the president keep talking about it in his signing statement? Obviously, he thinks that the bill does allow for that. He's saying... The bill allows for it, but my administration will choose not to do it. If that's good enough for you, look, if you want to vote for Obama for other reasons, that's perfectly understandable. No question about that, right? I get that. I might even agree with you, right? But if you want to say that he didn't do, you know, the, this atrocious act of signing the worst, one of the worst pieces of legislation into effect, you're wrong. You're wrong. The bill is allowing indefinite detention. The president understands and acknowledges that and says he might not do it or he says you know what let's be merciful to him and let's say that he is a hundred percent truth teller although he has not been in the past in terms of campaign promises and this time he means it and he won't do it so what the next president can republican or democrat you should have never signed it into law now a lot of people have been making one last charge oh it's Cenk Uger and Glenn Greenwald and people like him uh, that actually read bills and I can't believe they read it how outrageous when we should just trust the goodwill of uh, President Obama but it must be just them right they're probably seeing it wrong that's interesting because the American Civil Liberties Union has a whole team of lawyers they all looked at it and here's their conclusion Anthony Romero executive director of the ACLU says President Obama's actions today is a blight on his legacy because he will forever be known as the president who signed indefinite detention without charge or trial into law. So what's the next thing? Did the ACLU get it all wrong? Uh, all of their lawyers also don't know what they're doing, even though this is their job? American civil liberties? Okay, they say apparently, no, no, they don't. None of us get it. None of the people who read the bill understand it. None of the lawyers understand it. Only President Obama understands it. But even he says it's possible. All right, one last one from the ACLU. We are incredibly disappointed that President Obama signed this new law even though his administration had already claimed overly broad detention authority in court. Any hope that the Obama administration would roll back the constitutional excesses of George Bush in the war on terror was extinguished today. Is that clear enough for you? He is not going to do what he said he was going to do when it comes to civil liberties. He is not going to roll back the excesses of the Bush administration. And he is going to continue them and unfortunately with this law, codify them and strengthen them.